Hey everyone, Manu Fumi here where I talk about anything and everything related to money and how to grow your wealth. Today I want to share with you four worst CEOs and companies in Singapore, 2021 edition. Uh, companies that you should probably avoid investing your money in or if you're an entrepreneur, avoid making the same mistakes. Of course, this is just my opinion so you don't have to take it too seriously. Let's start with the fourth one on this list and that is Mediacorp. Mediacorp is not a public listed company but I strongly believe that they should be on this list. Ever since 2014, Mediacorp has failed to mention any earnings report which makes me assume that since 2015 they've been operating at a loss. Look at this. Mediacorp turns in profit of 11.6 million for financial year 2013-2014, 44.4 million in 2012, 25.7 million in 2013. And since they are not a public listed company, they are not required by law to publicize annual earnings or losses. Looking at the CEO's background and experience, I finally realized why Singaporean TV shows are still not up to standard. Now, Mediacorp used to have great shows like um, the classic period dramas in the 1990s and uh, 2000s. Uh, anyone remember these shows? Holland V, The Unbeatables, the Champion, Madame White Snake, Condor Heroes, Legend of the Eight Immortals, The Little Narnia, so on and so forth, right? There were so many good shows back then that even my Malay and Indian friends would watch. And Channel 8 shows, the, uh, the Chinese channel, was the money driver back then, not Channel 5. If you look at the newer dramas, the storylines are about current affairs, like shit that happens in our daily life. There's no room for imagination or fantasy or that escapism that we're separated from reality when we're watching TV. If I can see the same shit happening in my daily life, then why do I need to watch local TV? And they're wondering why viewership has gone downhill, right? I'm a strong believer that if you have a great product or a drama, Word of mouth will spread and people will watch it even if they're not from Singapore. This is one company that is lagging behind the times. They're not giving what the audience want and they can't retain good talent. How many of the top actors and hosts have left Mediacorp? And now with competition from outside of Singapore like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, etc. How is Mediacorp staying competitive for the millennial generation? A lot of us are not even watching local TV. We're turning to Netflix for our entertainment fix. And countries like Japan, um, Hong Kong, and Taiwan, they used to have good dramas, right? But they're now being taken over by China and Korea. And, and yes, guys, China has come a long way and their dramas are now super cinematic. So if I'm the CEO, I'm going to be thinking like, okay, I need to produce quality shows and I would want to collaborate with Hong Kong and China like we did before. Third on the list is Singtel, and uh, Singtel is the fifth largest company by market capitalization listed on the Singapore Stock Exchange and is primarily owned by Tomasic Holdings, the investment arm of the Singapore government. Singtel is on this list because in my opinion, they have stopped innovating and their business model is kind of boring uh, with declining profits year after year. Take a look at this. Its operating revenue declined 5% to $15.6 billion in addition to declining revenue from roaming services due to travel restrictions. Prepaid mobile service fees have also fallen along with the drop in inbound travelers and international students. There's only so much you can do as a telecommunications company unless you start investing in other sectors not related to the business. Otherwise, your company will not be able to grow much and possibly lose market share over the years to newer and more competitive companies. There's basically no upside in owning the stock. For the financial year ended 31st March 2021, Singtel paid total dividends of 7.5 cents per share. So let's say you were lucky and bought close to their 52-week low of about $2.21, then you're getting a dividend of about 3.4% return on your money. Now, Singtel pays dividends twice a year, and for the year 2020, they paid total dividends of 4.45%. But then you look at the declining share price. It's even lower than it was 20 years ago. If I had to choose between putting my money into Singtel or the CPFSA, I'm going to choose the CPFSA. This is interesting though. On 4th December 2020, it was announced that Singtel and right hailing firm Grab Consortium had been awarded a digital banking license and would start operating in 2022. I would love to see how this pans out for both Singtel and Grab. And I think it's great they're diversifying away from the communications business. 
And if I were them, I would invest more heavily into data storage centers and offer the service to Singtel customers as a bundled cloud service. Or maybe start a space company and fly Singaporeans into space. Huh? Okay, I'm, I'm kidding. But that could be a possibility, right? Second on the list is Capital Corporation. Capital reports $506 million net loss for fiscal year 2020, mainly due to offshore and marine impairments. Yes, many oil and offshore industries were affected in 2020 due to the pandemic. I was considering buying Capital back in 2016, 2017, but I did not because I didn't like their management team and oh my god, thank god I didn't buy it, otherwise I would have lost money in it. However, I do like their property property development side of the business and um, their efforts in pushing for sustainability. Capital's net profit did improve significantly to $300 million in first half of 2021, reversing net loss of $537 million in first half of 2020. And if you didn't know, Tomasek Holdings was going to buy a $3 billion deal for a majority control in Capital, but they decided not to. Well. Good job on Tomasic's part. However, they still own 20% of Capital. Capital is buying out SPH, Singapore Press Holdings, which unfortunately is the number one on this list. And I'm pretty sure you knew that it was gonna be on this list anyway, right? Ever since the Umbridge incident, people have lost respect for SPH. I call it the epic downfall of SPH. The privatization offer will see SPH delisted and become a wholly owned subsidiary of Capital. In my personal opinion, SPH Media Business should have been profitable if they do three things. First one is to change the CEO and reorganize the management team. The second is to change the business model because they're too traditional. And the third is to provide a new uh, well-established mission and KPIs for employees to hit. And I feel like they're too short-sighted to sell the business or maybe I'm too optimistic. SPH also has a number of other businesses like SPH Reads, which has Paragon and the Real Mall. Oh man, memories. Uh, and SPH on a 66% stake in SPH Reads. And most commercial Reads took a beating because of the coconut pandemic, right? Because um, a lot of businesses saw a drop in customers and they couldn't pay rent, so they had to close down and the, uh, these landlords can't collect on the rent. But you know, they should bounce back fairly quickly within the next two years, in my personal opinion. And SPH had some failed ventures in the past, like trying to sell wine to uh, newspaper subscribers and buying over mobile phone operator M1. Ironically, it seems that three or four companies are in the communications and media business. The CEO's responsibility is to manage overall operations, point it into the right direction so the company can flourish and prosper. That is why having a competent CEO in the company is important. This is how a stock should look like when the right leader is leading the company. Here's Apple for example with Tim Cook taking over, Best Buy, and Microsoft. Then look at Singtel, and Capital, and SPH. If you want some examples of companies in Singapore, let's look at Maple Tree Industrial Trust, DBS, and C Limited. So if there are no improvements or results, then the CEO should be changed, right? If you guys enjoyed this kind of video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell icon so you get notified whenever I post a new video. And guys, do me a favor and comment down below. It will really help with the YouTube algorithm. Let me know what you think about the list. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Who else do you think should be on this list? Um, I'll try to reply to each and every one of you. If you can just comment down below, I will really appreciate it. And thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you again next time.